Welcome to the Superfast Touch Designer tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to simulate a biomechanical centipede. Now, before you ask, my intention will never be to simulate something hyper-realistic, as could be the case if we used Blender. For me, what's interesting is to reinterpret the organic nature of biology in order to create art and express ourselves from other angles. So I can say that this centipede is a synthetic biology interpretation that will resolve in Touch Designer. Let's move forward. Chapter one, overview. The first section, which I've called generative lines, is where we'll create the entire skeleton that will support the rest of the geometric system. And honestly, using pops, it couldn't be more ridiculously easy. What I've done here is create a circle, which I've deformed using a noise. I applied an animation as always, and with a pattern chop using sine and cosine waves, we create a new attribute to give rotation to the skeleton. Now I use a copy to duplicate these lines and get this more complex form that we'll use later. From these first two sections, I'll only explain one because the second is an exact clone. Here we mainly take care of separating a part of the skeleton, which will turn into the body of the centipede. To do this, I've used a delete with a very simple condition. Now with noise, I've given more movement to the lines. And finally, the star of this network is this math, which with a simple operation called mix, we blend the values of the noise with the original position values without the noise. Using another parameter we created in the pattern here, called noise modulation. This is to make sure we modulate the noise based on a ramp so that the values of the noise are modulated according to the ramp. This means we can control how strong the noise is at different points along the line, creating a smoother or more dramatic effect. We already saw this in the previous tutorial, only we used a slightly different technique. After this, for those who have seen my latest tutorials about pops, this part will already be familiar to you. We use a copy where we use the lines as a source and a tiny circle that will be copied along the path lines once you understand this, the rest will be seen in the tutorial in more detail. Finally, we apply a skin, normals, to give volume to the geometry. The second section here is exactly the same, but what changes is the delete, where we use the opposite operation to delete the other segmentation that we need to make the legs. Here, finally, we grab the complete centipede, delete a few points so it's not too heavy, and again we use the same copy technique to create some floating particles that share the same structure as the skeleton. To finish, as you know, we won't cover how to do the render here because you can find that in my other tutorials. And if you want to see this project in much more detail, it will be available to download on my Patreon. But basically, we have three geo components, each one with its respective PBR material. And as you know, I almost always use an environment light with an HDRI image. And for the post-processing, I used a bit of Bloom and a Luma Blur to give depth to the composition. Without anything more to say, let's create the centipede. A quick pause. If we haven't met yet, I'm Okami Rufu, and my life's purpose is to create, inspire, and educate through my work as a creative technologist focused on touch designer. I'm jumping in just for a moment to let you know that I've built a growing community on school, where you'll find beginner and intermediate courses, exclusive tutorials, and a library of downloadable project files, including special bundles you won't find anywhere else. But more than that, it's an active, thriving space. For example, in one of the exclusive tutorials I uploaded recently, there are already tons of people interacting, sharing project files, asking questions, and helping each other. It goes far beyond a traditional academic setting. I've put a lot of energy into making it practical, efficient, and fun. And the best part? This space is slowly integrating all the value I've already built on Patreon, all in one place for the same price. I truly hope to see you there, sharing knowledge, experimenting together, and asking the questions that help us all grow. I'll leave all the links in the description. Chapter 2 Network. Let's start by creating a circle. Make sure the orientation is set to the ZX plane. Reduce the radius to 0 0.5 and increase the divisions to at least 250. Each division will correspond to one segment of the centipede. It should represent part of the body and part of the leg. Now we're going to apply a simple animation on the y-axis rotation using absolute time dot seconds multiplied by 10. And with that, our circle is ready. Let's connect a transform because I want to deform the scale. So I use the value 0.4 on the x-axis of the scale. Next, we'll use a noise. You can copy the parameters I have here. As always, 
You know the noise is one of those operators, where we have the most possibilities to play. But for now, if you want the result to look exactly like mine, you can use these values. Then go to the 4D Translate and apply another animation using absolute time.seconds divided by 15. Perfect. Now that we have the circle with these deformations, all that's left is to create a pattern, which will help us create an extra type of rotation. For this, leave the size parameter at 3. Set the type to sign for the first parameter and cosine for the second. And again, we'll use absolute time.seconds divided by a number you find interesting. Now, since we'll use this to rotate each segment of the centipede along its own axis, we need to use rotation values. So we raise the map to high to 360 for both axes. Unfold the menu on these arrows here and activate override attribute. Select integer values. Finally, let's name this new attribute rotation. Perfect. Now, at the top part, let's create a line. Use these values, 0 and 0 0.25. And for the divisions, we can leave it at 50. Then create another pattern, and this one is important. We can leave the size parameter at 1 and choose the ramp type. Basically, we want the linear values from 0 to 1 that the ramp gives us. With that, we'll later modulate the presence of the noise. Perfect. Let's call this attribute noise modulation. It will help us later to blend between the original position values of each point within each line and the values the noise will apply to each of those same lines. What the ramp does is let us modulate the presence of the noise on each line, giving us more control overall. Now create a copy and connect pattern 2 to the second input. In the template section, all we need to do is activate template rotate and find our previously created attribute called rotation. Up to this point, we've already achieved this generative structure where the lines are rotating from their center. Now this point is important. We'll create a line metrics after the copy pop-up because we want to activate an attribute called vertex index in line strip. This basically gives us the index value of each point in every line. That is, if we have a line with 50 divisions like we made at the beginning, this vertex index will give us integers from 0 to 50, where each number is the index of each point in each line. If you want to know more about this, I invite you to join my school community. Where we share more detailed information, we have a study group, where we're reviewing techniques and project files in more depth. Once we've created this new attribute, we can already create the body of the centipede. To do this, we're going to create our first delete. Basically, in the attribute section, we choose the vert index we created earlier using line metrics. And we'll write a function that says, delete any point whose value is greater than 10. With that, we're already segmenting the skeleton of lines we've created. Now create a noise. And to keep things organized, a select. This part is optional. In the noise, you can use these values. And here's an important detail. If you want the body and the legs of the centipede to remain properly connected, both noise operators will need to have the exact same values. I'll show you this part later. If you want to dive much deeper and join nearly 3,000 people already on my Patreon, you'll get access to free VJ packs, all the project files from my YouTube tutorials, exclusive components and plugins, and a fully organized shop with conceptual VJ packs more advanced plugins, and much more.
Everything is perfectly arranged in collections, so you can easily browse and find exactly what you need. And if you don't want to subscribe, that's fine too. You can buy individual project files anytime, no strings attached. Perfect. Copy these values carefully and also animate the translate with absolute time.seconds divided by five. Once you have this, you can now create the math mix, the second most important operator in this logic. Here we'll define the weight of the noise modulation on the lines. Use the mix operation, ABC. And in the first scope, select the points from the first input, the noise. In the second scope, use the points from the second input, the original points without noise. And in the third scope, use the noise modulation attribute, which allows us to use the ramp to weigh the noise according to a linear movement from zero to one. Perfect. With this, what you typically get is that at point zero of the ramp, no noise is applied. So you have the base of the lines stuck to a coordinate without modulation. And as the ramp progresses, the effect of the noise is increasingly felt in the lines. After this, create another line metrics and only activate the tangents to give correct orientation to the circles we'll clone later. Now, connect a math, and above that create another circle with these parameters. ZX plane, a radius of 0 0.009, and very low divisions. You can leave it at 10. Next, create a copy and connect the math to the second input of the copy. Now go to template scale, and we'll also use the noise modulation attribute for the scale of the circles. Activate this option and look for the noise modulation attribute. Also activate template rotate to vector. Select force direction to plus Y. And we'll use the tan parameter from line metrics. So the circle orientation follows the line correctly. As you can see, the base of the circles starts small and gets bigger. To invert this, go back to the math we created and remap the values. Here we just have to invert them. Put one in map to low and zero in map to high. Then you can use multiply to modulate this calculation. It's also important to change the input attribute to noise modulation. Finally, create a skin, followed by a normal. And since this is the body of the centipede, we want to give it a bit of extra detail. So we'll create an extrude. Lower the values to 0 0.003, and the inset can be set to negative 1.2. With this, the body now has a displacement that makes it more interesting. The next step is to copy this whole network, excluding the extrude, since we won't need it for the legs. Copy and paste that here, Now select the delete and simply invert the operation. We'll now delete the body and keep the legs. Perfect. As you can see, this result looks super interesting. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the noise in both sections has to be identical. Otherwise, you'll see that the body and legs become desynchronized. Still, try changing the values and playing around a bit. Each section, as you can see, is connected to my select pops, which are already connected to the render to see this final effect. Now, to create the particles, this is extremely easy. First, create a select, drag the result of the centipede legs into the new select. Connect this to a delete, and use a pattern to delete points so we don't end up with a heavy render. Besides, we only want some subtle particles to help set the atmosphere in the composition. I'll use this pattern that selects from 0 to 100 2,500 points, but only keeps one point every 210 points. 
Now click the Keep Selected option. Then create a point, connect it to a copy, and the rest, you already know how to finish it. I'll drag this into the point render and finish the composition. I'll reposition the camera a bit better. And now you can see we have our complete project. As you'll see, the post-processing is quite simple but powerful. Using a bloom, it gives depth and a glow which helps us aesthetically. And finally, I used a Luma Blur. I hope you've successfully completed this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments.